What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to review the 2024 Road King Special in Billiard Gray. So some of you may not be aware, but this is the only Road King available. They no longer do the regular Road King. It's just the special model, at least for now. And I say that because although this is a 2024 model, this is what's known as a carryover model, meaning the only thing that changed on this was the colors. The new 24s will be out at the time of this video going up uh, in about a week. So then we'll know if, if they end up doing some crazy new variation of the Road King, which I don't expect, but you never know. Point being, if you've already seen one of my videos about the Road King Special, nothing has changed on this bike since the last one that I did. So don't waste your time watching this video. Go watch another one of my videos. However, if you're just now learning about the Road King or you haven't kept up with them for a while, stick around and we'll do a full walk around review. I'll show you everything this bike has to offer. If you've watched any of my other reviews, this one will be no different. I'll give you guys a quick walk around while we talk about a few specs and numbers. So your MSRP on this bike is gonna start at $24,999. Your colors will be billiard gray, which is the one we're looking at now. Black, so your normal Harley Davidson black. You can also get it in a red rock, which we happen to have right over here. And then you can also get it in this white onyx pearl, which I absolutely love. Doesn't really do it justice, I don't think, but uh, that is a beautiful color. So let's talk about that really quickly. Billiard gray is now your new standard color, meaning there is no upcharge for it. Black now will cost you an additional $500. The red rock colorway is an additional $650. The white onyx pearl is an additional $700. So your seat height on the Road King Special is 26.4 inches. Your running order weight is 807 pounds. Comes with the Milwaukee 8 114, which makes 95 horsepower and 122 foot-pounds of torque. Also, this bike comes standard with ABS and the linked brakes included. So I always have a hard time trying to figure out where I want to start when I'm doing these reviews. Uh, what I used to do in the early days was we would start with the tank, literally the design on the tank. Um, I kind of got away from that, but I got a comment from an old subscriber that said that that's my thing and they miss it and to bring it back. So I'm doing this for you. Sorry, I forgot who left the comment. This one is for you. So let's start with the tank. Starting off, your tank is six gallons, so the biggest tank that Harley makes. But what we normally talk about is the badge or the sticker or however Harley chooses to put their design on the tank. Uh, this one is pretty timeless, your classic bar and shield in chrome, uh, just against solid paint. Always looks really good. Um, as you get a little closer, if the camera will focus, yeah, there you go. You see you've kind of got some, some detail in there. So I'll go ahead and hop on this bike as if I were riding it so I can give you that perspective and that view just to kind of show you what you would be looking at. So a lot of people, uh, I thought this was common knowledge, but apparently not, uh, don't realize that there's no longer two different fuel tanks. It's one solid tank. So you only have to fill up on this side. This one is just going to be a fuel gauge, which is kind of uh, something that's going away. At this point, most of the gauges for the fuel on the Harleys are digital. So I do kind of like to see that on the Road King. This is a classic looking Harley Davidson. So it's kind of fitting that it has that. You'll see you still have your uh, analog speedo. You will have a digital tachometer, which I'll show you in just a second. Your indication lights are here. You would start the bike here. So we'll go over your controls really quickly. I know a lot of you know them, but some people are watching this for the first time, so bear with us. So if you wanted to start the bike, turn your ignition here. Everything comes alive. This is gonna be your run kill switch. It's on run. You would hit this button to start it up. These are your hazard lights, just like your car has. So your right turn signal, as you can see, Harley controls, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. This side, you have your high beam, low beam, uh, passing lamp, traction control, horn, left turn signal. You do have cruise control on this bike, which is a really nice feature. 
Then you've got a little button up here which does your trip. So as you can see, there's five miles on this bike. Hit that trip button, trip A, trip B. How many miles till empty? Whoever buys this bike needs to put some gas in it. Um, your clock, and then this is your gear indicator and your RPM. So like I was saying, your tachometer will be digital, so it'll be a digital readout. Uh, we're in neutral right now, so it's not gonna show a gear, but uh, this is also where it would show you which gear you're in, which can be helpful, especially for newer, newer riders. So this bike does come standard with security, and really all that means is you get a key fob that when it's not uh, in a certain proximity of the bike, the bike will no longer start. Uh, and if someone picks the bike up, your turn signals will flash. However, there is no alarm or anything that goes off unless you add that um, later on. So what you're looking at here is a fork lock. So with the wheel turned all the way to the left like it is now, you would just put in your key, turn it to lock, and that's gonna keep this bike from being able to be pushed away because your steering will be locked at that angle and you can only push it in a circle. Now there is no key to start this bike. As I mentioned, it's got security. So as long as that fob is in your pocket, in your saddlebag, somewhere in proximity of the bike, uh, use the start process I showed you and this bike will start up. So we'll move on to the engine. Like I said, this is the Milwaukee 8, 114 cubic inch, making 95 horsepower, 122 torque. Pretty solid numbers right out of the box. I do want to point out that this engine is in black trim as is the rest of the bike. That's all you can get for the 2024 model year on the Road King Special. No matter which color option you choose, they will all be with this black trim. I think that's why they chose the colors that they chose. And I gotta say, this white onyx pearl color with the black, um, that just, that color does it for me. Um, certain bikes, this billiard gray, I don't hate it. Um, the Road King with this black trim, I actually like uh, a good amount. I was kind of critical of the soft tail standard. I think it's because it has some polished parts and a little more chrome. So to me, that bike looks like it was primered and ready for paint, but never quite made it there. On the Road King though, it, it, it works, at least to me. You guys let me know down in the comments what you think. Uh, is this primer or do you dig this color on this bike? So moving around to the front of the bike, we'll go to the wheels uh, for a factory wheel. I feel like in the recent years, Harley Davidson has really done a good job to step up their uh, wheel program. The factory wheels look a lot better. Uh, I bought a new Street Glide in 2015 and those wheels were just not it. They're not terrible, but they definitely didn't look as good as these. I also like that these are coming blacked out. Uh, wheels are super expensive. If you wanna put new wheels on your Harley, no matter which manufacturer you go with, you're gonna pay a lot of money. So I really like that Harley puts decent wheels out of the gate so you don't have to do that. Uh, you see you do have a dual disc front end, meaning two brakes. Uh, you'll see the branding on your rotor here is Brembo. I believe that's who makes Harley's brakes anyway. So like on your, uh, your Nightster models over there, they're branded with the Brembo logo. I think Harley Davidson just rebrands their Brembo brakes with their own logo. If anyone wants to confirm or disprove that in the comments, uh, feel free to leave one. Your fender is a little more wrapped than some of the other bikes that we've previously looked at. And I think that's just part of the iconic Harley Davidson styling that the Road King has, as is this big nacelle. So this whole big cluster here is what's known as a nacelle. That's the easiest way to identify Road King. It's gonna be the only bike with that big nacelle. Now people are retrofitting them onto different soft tail builds and whatnot, but from the factory, it's the only one that has that. You'll also see that you do get the Harley-Davidson Daymaker light. Uh, super bright, super nice light. I know at this point, a lot of us are changing our lights, uh, mostly for cosmetics or bling factor. But again, it's good to see that that's on there. You're gonna have good lighting right out of the box. The same can't be said for your turn signals, but I do like that they're smoked. So I wanna point out these bolts that are on the side of your nacelle here. Um, you can change that hardware and you can end up throwing a windshield on here. Uh, it's been a while since I've looked at the different Road King windshields available. My favorite used to be the one that came on the 2014 CVO. It had a vent in it. It was already smoked from the factory. Just a really good looking windshield. Uh, so hopefully there's something like that still available. 
And I agree, I do like the Road King stripped down no windshield as well, but on your longer trips, that does make the ride a lot better. Um, Harley went back to the cable clutch several years ago, so you're gonna have your cable clutch here. Obviously, hydraulic brakes, just like all your other Harleys. So move around to this side. Another thing, you know, I, I don't know who's watching this, so I kind of have to cater to all audiences. Uh, you no longer get the heel shifter on the touring bikes. Most of you probably already know how I feel about that. I take mine off anyway. Move my toe shifter to the outside, just like they have it now, uh, just to give myself some more room on the bike so my foot's not hitting it. I've never used a heel shifter and never do, even if I ride a bike that has one. So I like to get it out of my way. Harley decided that they would do <laughs> that for you and, uh, and just not offer it. I think uh, the CVO models, actually, here, we'll look. Yeah, so your CVO models do still come with a hill shifter. So if you wanna spend, I don't even remember what these things are going for, but if you wanna spend a big chunk of money, you're gonna get it. Um, show you guys these three real quick. Uh, that is the Street Glide CVO in the Whiskey Neat colorway. This is the Road Glide CVO that uh, Tim Harley Davidson and Anderson had custom painted. So that is a one of one paint job. I know we're getting off from the Road King review, sorry guys. Um, and that's your standard silver color in the Street Glide CBO. Now back to the Road King. So as I was saying, um, no heel shifter on this bike. You do still get your standard floorboards. You are set up for a passenger with passenger pegs and a two up riding seat. Uh, your engine guard on this thing is a really good looking design. I think they started doing this in 21. They took it away from that big giant bar that just everybody took off their bikes. Uh, they just, they didn't look that good. Um, they did offer good protection, but you really get the same protection in a much smaller form factor with that one. So I'm glad that Harley went that route. I will talk about your saddle bags, although these haven't changed for a while. They are the one touch bags, which are really nice. Um, in the bike, here's your key. So this is your security fob, like I was talking about. No buttons, nothing for you to think about, nothing for you to mash, press, uh, fidget with. Your standard barrel keys that locks the uh, forks like we talked about. And then a nice little Tim's Harley Davidson keychain your owner's manual and stuff. So these saddlebags are gonna give you a combined total of two and a half cubic feet of storage. Uh, these will be the stretched bags, meaning instead of cut flat and straight across, um, they kind of have those corners that wrap the exhaust. So if you run a dual exhaust setup, that is a really nice looking setup. However, if you switch this to like a two into one pipe, we're only having one, uh, one exhaust pipe coming out. It does look odd to me, so I just prefer the non-stretch bag look. Uh, and you're really not gaining anything storage-wise. I mean, you get that little bitty corner in there, which is practically nothing. Uh, these bags are very easily removed. If you wanna take them off, all you have to do is literally unscrew both of these and uh, lift up and out, and these bags will come off. However, the Road King is not designed to be ridden without saddle bags. Uh, you can ride it uh, mechanically, it's just cosmetically, it does not look good. It was not made <laughs> to be run like that. So on the back here, you'll see super clean, no antennas, nothing like that. Uh, your run lights, tail lights, and turn signals are made into the two lights that you see. Uh, this reflector can easily be removed. I'm not instructing you to do so, but if you don't like it, uh, it can come off. Uh, you also have another running light right here. That's gonna be it for the Road King Special. I'm not gonna test ride this specific bike because it happens to already be sold. They just haven't picked it up yet. However, in 2021, I did do another full review of the Road King Special where I did do a test ride. So if you wanna see the test ride, see my thoughts on that. Be sure and check out that video. Please subscribe if you're not already. Like the video if you enjoyed it and I'll catch you guys in the next one.